Welcome to the channel. I'm here today to give you the concert review of the latest show that I attended in Toronto, Sold Out House at the Garrison, Rhapsody of Fire with Windrose and Seven Kingdoms. Now, normally when I do these, I give you a little bit of a breakdown of every single band. I'm going to do that today as well, but to me, this was really the Windrose show with Seven Kingdoms in support. That's how it felt. That's the reason why I went, and I'm not the only one. Based on what I saw tonight, I think a lot of fans were there specifically for the two opening bands, not necessarily for Rhapsody of Fire. But let me start off by talking about Seven Kingdoms, a band that I love, a band that I've never seen live before. They were slotted to play in Toronto with Unleashed the Archers during the pandemic when things started to open up a little bit. And then they had some issues with COVID, restrictions came up in terms of, uh, of shutdowns and that concert in Toronto got scrapped. So I didn't get to see them that time around, but I got to see them today. Um, outstanding performance. First of all, let me say this, Sabrina is an incredible vocalist. Now, going to their show is not a surprise in terms of the quality of their material, because if you're a fan and you listen to their records, you already know that the quality is there. But when you see them live, when you see the energy that they bring, when you see their stage presence, how comfortable they are, coming off of a huge tour with Powerwolf, which definitely helped them feel more comfortable in their own skin, understand exactly what they can do night in and night out, you see the results of all of that maturity now come to fruition when they're performing in front of smaller crowds, but crowds that are there more for them and not just happen to be there and seeing them in the process. Because the crowd was definitely energized, connected with the band, responding to the songs, singing along a lot of the tracks, and this doesn't happen by accident. So I like to see that there were lessons learned from their previous tours, Power Wolf and, um, and even Unleash the Archers. Uh, every tour, you, you take something away. You learn something, you improve upon something. But when you play with bands that put you on a different pedestal, that put you against or in front of a much larger, larger um, audience like Power Wolf did, you definitely grow quicker. And the band showcased that, uh, at least I see that on this performance. Because it's not, of a, it's not a performance uh, of an opening band, it's a performance of a headliner. The way they moved, the way they chose their set, the way they performed the songs, the right breaks at the right time, the right connection with the audience at the right time, uh, the way they, they, uh, they pulled the audience in into the performance, allowing the audience to be an extra band member, if you will. Like I said, the singing along of the songs, all of these things add energy. All of these things make the performance stand out, make the song sound better. It, it gives the right energy, it gives the right vibe to those that chose to show up and watch the band play versus just going on stage, grabbing your instrument and just doing a solid performance, but nothing more than the least of what's expected. So these guys definitely pushed the envelope, pushed the bar, and I was blown away. I was blown away. I just honestly could have sat there for another 45 minutes to listen to their, to their songs. Uh, they, they deserved a longer set based on the, uh, on the audience reaction and based on the quality of their music. I cannot wait to see these guys move away from these opening slots, which are important for them. Don't get me wrong, these are important for them. These are stepping stones. But I feel like they're at the cusp, if not already there, where they deserve a headlining tour. Maybe a smaller tour, obviously not at the level of some of the tours that they've been a part of, but a headlining tour nevertheless. I think that the men will be there. I think the interest will be there. So I think it's just a matter of time for the right stars to align for Seven Kingdoms. But let me say this once again, solid band, solid performance, Sabrina's vocals. It's something out of this world, like really phenomenal, warm, uh, great range, the right ebbs and flows, uh, really pushing the envelope, feeling, uh, not just singing, but feeling the songs, feeling the lyrics, feeling the tracks. It, it just gives such such a, a strong essence it, 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 it oozes essence when you're on stage and you're that kind of a performer and she's definitely that kind of a performer. I absolutely love this set by Seven Kingdoms. Now, next came Winrose, the Dwarfs of Italy, on stage in Toronto for the very first time. 
I saw these guys last summer in Portugal at Vox Metal Fest and it was one of the best performances of the day. A day that included uh, Emperor as the headliner. These guys had the crowd jumping. So having seen them live in a festival format, this to me was a little bit different because it's a smaller venue, even though it's sold out, still a different kind of energy. If the place was packed for Seven Kingdoms, uh, they found a few extra spots to fill in a few more bodies for Windrose, but you couldn't move an inch. You couldn't move an inch. The place was at the brim. It was just, you know, it's just incredibly packed with people. Anywhere you looked, there was a body. There's just nowhere for you to go. Uh, and that was already a sign that a lot of people really were interested and came to see Winrose perform. Now their set was you would, what you would expect, almost a festival style set. I actually think that this set and what they played at Vogge, if not the same, it's very close to being the same, but it's a festival style set, which makes it feel very short because it, it is short and obviously finishing off with uh, diggy diggy hole and then adding to it the techno dance remix version of diggy diggy hole I thought that was fucking phenomenal I felt like I was uh, at a night at the Roxbury that that's kind of how it felt that's kind of how things went but the crowd was insane incredible circle pit within the first two songs incredible sir in a place that was jam packed with people that you couldn't move I honestly don't know how they found room to get a circle pit going but they did the crowd was singing along. I honestly felt like Francesco could have put the mic down for most of the songs and kind of gone and grab a, a Peroni and, and just and just relaxed because, you know, uh, the crowd was singing along for him. The crowd knew the lyrics, knew the songs, loved it. It's absolutely insane. Um, I, I just feel bad for fans that don't have a hoodie like I do uh, because the merch was almost inexistent. Now, for those of you wondering, what happened? There's no merch. Well, they order enough merch to last them for half of the tour or what they thought they were going to sell for half of the duration of the tour. They sold all of that merch in three nights, in the first three nights of the tour. This is the fourth night. So now they're going to get a few more reloads of merch so that the next couple of shows you guys watching this uh, that are planning on attending will be able to buy t-shirts and hoodies and vinyls and CDs and all of that good shit from Winrose. But they absolutely blew their load in the first three nights of this tour. That tells you how many people are coming to see Windrose. This is the sign. The merch not lasting more than three nights is a clear sign of who is selling seats, who is selling tickets on this tour. And it's definitely Windrose. It's just, it, 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 this is not me blowing smoke up anybody's ass. This is just facts and I'm just putting them out there so people understand exactly what is happening. And then when Rhapsody of Fire came on, first of all, Alex was not with the band. So technically it feels almost like you're watching a Rhapsody of Fire cover band because the only original member is not even playing with them on this tour. Um, the energy was not the same. It was just not the same. First of all, I'm not gonna say half of the crowd, but at least a third of the crowd was gone. Just left after Windrose. Once again, showing that People were really coming to see Windrose. Windrose are the ones really selling the tickets. They're really the ones putting, you know, asses on the seats, sort of speak, because there's no seats. But Rhapsody of Fire, not that they're a bad band. You know, they come on, they perform their songs, they perform them well, but that's just it. It's a performance with nothing else around it. It doesn't have the flair of Seven Kingdoms. It didn't have the flair of Windrose. It didn't have the interaction with the audience of Seven Kingdoms. It didn't have the circle pit of Windrose. It was a much different performance. A good performance, but a different performance. A band that felt like it's going through the motions, playing their songs, trying to give some energy, but the energy was kind of lacking. Not just from the band towards the audience, but also from the audience towards the band. This is kind of where we are. I, I think fans kind of are letting people know, they're letting the bands know, they're definitely letting the promoters know who they want to see as headliners. Uh, and I think it's the two bands that didn't have a headlining set. So I'm hoping that both of them, Windrose and Seven Kingdoms, come back uh, on a North American run, both of them independent from one another as headliners, because I think the interest is there. I think the numbers show that interest. 
and I think they'll be able to pack exactly the same venue as they packed today uh, with other bands supporting them on those endeavors. So I'm going to put the description on the description of this video. I'm going to put the tour dates because this tour just started. In Toronto was the fourth night. They played Boston, uh, Montreal, Ottawa, and Toronto. Uh, the next show, I believe, is in Chicago. So all the dates are going to be in the description of this video. You definitely don't want to miss this tour. First time Windrose playing in North America. If that's not reason enough, I don't know what is. Get ready to dig some holes. Get ready for the dense remix to come right at the end so you can feel that night at the Roxbury. And then obviously Seven Kingdoms. And if you are a diehard fan of Rhapsody of Fire, obviously you're gonna get to see them and you're gonna get to hear the songs. Um, you're just getting a little bit of a different Rhapsody of Fire uh, for sure. All right guys, let me know your thoughts on this tour. Hit me up in the comment section. I'll see you all at the next video.